Hello, everybody. Welcome to Formula to Freedom, 10 Tips to Living and Eating Clean. Hi, everybody. My name is Colleen McCarter, and I'm a nutritionist, and the name of my com company is Sustain Well. I started this journey at the age of 12. Um, I had a low self-image of myself, and I've always wanted to control the situation. Many of you might be able to relate with that. I lacked confidence in myself, and I had a lot of limiting beliefs. I believed that I was, you know, just overweight and just not happy with myself, and I was given environmental cues from different people in my family, you know, who you know, living in the eyes of an older brother that, or actually as a younger brother, actually, that, you know, really um, seemed to do everything right. And as the big sister, I tried to protect and things like that. And when people call you names, you know, back 30 years ago, the population of people that were overweight was very few. And I was one of those people that was awkwardly um, pleasantly chubby. And uh, at the time that the movie came out, Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory, those little Oompa Loompas were kind of short, little squatty people. And I related to them. And a boy called me a name. He called me an Oompa Loompa. And I didn't like that character. So I immediately went to um, thinking of myself as fat and ugly, just like that. And I lived with that image. So really words hurt and what we believe and perceive of ourselves can be really deeply ingrained in our psyche. So this started at a young age and then started me on the journey to trying to find every diet plan potion to be like others. I wanted to be like the thin girls, the popular girls. And that really affected me, you know, even through today. And how many of us women, you know, look at someone else and think that they got it all together but we don't really know their story. So I'm gonna kind of walk you through the journey of freeing yourself from that negative story about self-worth and weight. And I don't know about you, but the goal of this particular formula to freedom and the goal that I you know, aspire is to give each and every one your individual formula to set yourself free from yo-yo dieting, from what other people say, from the scale, from those words like, oh, because I didn't follow this particular plan, I'm bad. And we shouldn't go there. We should say, you know what, today wasn't a day that I was eating as healthy or living a healthy lifestyle, and that's okay. And that's what I preach and I coach and I educate people on is better behavioral habits and looking at our life and trying to find a better journey. So let me tell you a little bit about me so we can get started on this presentation. I have a BS in nutrition and dietetics from the University of Akron. I've worked at Richmond Heights Hospital, working with um, patients on therapeutic diets, as well as Montefiore Nursing Home. And I led a Weight Watcher classes for 12 years. It was there that I woke up and realized that I really wanted to help men and women, majority of women, really look at freeing themselves. Because I don't know how many people over that 12 years would come through the doors of Weight Watchers of which I'd help them lose 25 to 35 to 50 pounds. And then they might gain a few pounds back and they would look at me and like feel the shame and the guilt. And I realized that my passion and my desire was to help that man and woman really look inside themselves and find the qualities. It's not the diet, it's how we perceive ourselves. So my journey was looking at helping people live clean and eat clean and live in an environment where you accept yourself. Because once you accept yourself, you can get through that journey. So I'm going to tell you how to live free and eat clean today. So what you're going to expect is you're going to learn to implement some healthier habits, ways to do that. We're going to set some goals today. We're going to have action steps to help you give you that formula to freedom, small steps at a time. First step today is we're going to talk about self-acceptance. We need to accept ourselves for where you are right now, 
right today. No matter if you're 10 pounds overweight, 15 pounds overweight, you need to accept that you are strong, you are loved, you are vibrant. And that is so key to doing any kind of change or transformation. You need to know where you're at and where you're gonna to need to move from. You need to have kind of a daily plan, something that you feel good for. So for example, a plan may be where you get up and you take deep breaths. You may do a gratitude journal. You may wake up and drink a cup of water before you do your coffee. You may decide to take the dog for a walk or go for a walk and then you kind of start your day. You need to know what your day looks like from where your activities are going. Are you going to work? What might be some challenges in your environment to deviate you from living that healthy, vibrant life that you want? And basically a plan is we can't control it. You have to have a set plan and then know that you can manage any kind of snowballs or obstacles that come in your way. So I help people on developing a plan that makes sense for them. So you need to kind of have a wellness routine. And what I mean with that by that is when you look at your wellness, are you getting up and um, meditating? You need to have a plan for fitness a plan to drink your water, a plan to get the variety of fruits and vegetables, and a steps to having self-acceptance and love and what that looks like. We also need to exercise. And what I mean by exercise is we need to move a little bit more. And we need to find something that we're going to enjoy doing. So just because your neighbor runs doesn't mean that's a good exercise for you. So you have to find an exercise regime that you're going to fall in love with, that you're going to be willing to get up and keep with that wellness habit every single day. So there is so many type of movement. There's dancing, there's roller skating, there's sweeping, there's lunges, there's Tai Chi, there's yoga, there's swimming, there's cycling, there's just leisure bike riding or or walking and really smelling in the air. So really Google search and find an exercise or a movement activity that you can do at least three times a day for 30 minutes to get your cardiovascular level up. And really what's truly important, it's not necessarily the exercise, but it's what the exercise does for us. It makes us feel good, it increases the endorphins, we feel strength and energized to face the day. So exercise is key to really building that wellness muscle every single day. We need to know our trigger foods. And what I mean by that is everybody has a food item that they particularly crave. Um, some people are sugary, salty, some people are sweet. You need to know that when you go into an environment and cake, is your demise. You need to know how to manage that cake, that cookie, that pie. And we also need to know what is a pie or a cookie situation. So let me share a little story with you. So my dad would always wake up on Sunday morning and he would get us warm donuts from a bakery called Jack's Donuts. And we also would go to church. So my dad was a fireman and I looked so looked forward to these warm glazed or cinnamon glazed donuts. So I knew that he would be getting them. So I would make sure I was up by seven o'clock because the donuts would arrive warm at 730. And I knew I had quality time with dad because he was a fireman and I hadn't seen him that night. So the donut was more about the love and the relationship with dad and having some quality time with him. So whenever I'm feeling lonely or exhausted or needing some quality conversation, I turn to a donut. So we need to look at what the donut gives to us instead of saying, I'm gonna diet the donuts bad, we need to look deep inside and say, I am feeling a donut because I'm missing somebody, or I really have to have a hard conversation with my spouse or with my boss. And we can't procrastinate and use food 
as a solution to the initial problem. And once we understand that, we can manage that donut or that cookie or those potato chips a little bit better. Not that we want to remove them, we want to manage them. So when we have the donut, we look at saying, I'm going to have this donut and I'm going to eat it with self-acceptance and love. And then I'm going to make sure that my following food choices or my following meals are set up for success. So I eat the donut and I know my lunch is going to be a lighter fare. So it might be more of a soup and salad. It might be just a chicken breast with some vegetables. So it's not gonna be all the things that I haven't seen all day, like for instance, going to McDonald's or going into pizza. So we need to recognize that food, know what it triggers our behavior to be, and then show up, track it, and then evaluate how good did I do? Did I do halfway well? But know that we don't use the adage of, oh my gosh, I had the donut or the cupcake or the cookie and I was bad again. That is behavior that really, when you think about, isn't kind to yourself. And when another person tell you that, oh, you've been bad because you ate something. And we need to switch those negative self-talks and those limiting beliefs and allow ourselves to have what we really enjoy in moderation and have a trade-off. If I have the donut, I might get to exercise more, not I have to because I was bad. Though that kind of language, we need to change and clean up the words that we're telling ourselves. So that's one tip on understanding and relating to our trigger foods. We have to look at the nutritional guidelines and they've recently changed and we need to look at them every you know, couple of years and really look at nutrition as foundational and it hasn't changed over the last 80 years. We have to look at making sure we're getting a good source of quality fats, that we're getting enough lean proteins, that we're getting enough complex carbohydrates in fruits and vegetables and grains such as rice and pasta and breads and crackers. We need to also know that we are getting enough sleep and that we're incorporating on our plate a variety of colors of the rainbow because those colors give us the antioxidants we need. So you need the reds from tomatoes, you need the purples from blueberries, you need figs, you need dates, you need that fiber, you need kiwi fruit, you need Brussels sprouts. And a lot of times we don't like certain fruits and vegetables because our body is so laden with processed food and those um, carbohydrates like pasta, and there's so much added sugar. So one goal I would hope that you would kind of look forward to from this free formula to freedom is take one tip that I tell you. And one of the things is looking at your sugar grams and looking at keeping them less than 25 grams. So that's reading the label and seeing how much total sugar is in that. What I mean that by that is when you read the label, you can see that it has flour and maybe some sugar, fructose corn syrup, sucralose. How many sugar derivatives are you counting? And when you look at that label out of that 28 grams, how much sugar is in there? And I might break it down into total sugar as 15 grams. So that means 15 minus 25, you know, that doesn't leave you much, much room. And when you divide those total grams by four, that's how many teaspoons that we're having in sugar. So when you think of a bag of sugar, there's a five pound bag, we might be eating a five pound bag of sugar in a week's time, multiply that out by four weeks, 
And that is calories that we're not using that is suppressing our immune system, that is causing all sorts of autoimmune diseases, causing brain fog. So when you really look at where are, am I getting my nutrition from? Is it all coming from protein? Is it all coming from carbs? Is it all coming from fruit? We need to have a balance of that. And that's where I challenge you to really kind of document or take pictures of what am I eating every single day? Do I start my morning with um, yogurt, plain yogurt, and add some fruit to it, which is more natural? Do I start my day with maybe a bowl of sugary cereal, like Fruit Loops? And could I change that to maybe oatmeal? So taking small steps to really looking at the guidelines and adding the guidelines that fit into your lifestyle. Sleep. Now, sleep is a key component of rejuvenation and allowing your body's cells to repair. So the recommended amount of sleep is, you know, seven to 10 hours a day. And we really need to look at, okay, am I only getting four and is worry and anxiety causing me to not get the quality of sleep? So we need to look at if I'm only getting four, how could I get four and a half? Could I do some meditation? Is my lack of sleep caused from the foods that I'm eating? Is my lack of sleep caused from excess mind control and finding a practice of maybe meditation, deep breathing, or maybe um, there's other factors. Maybe it's medication related. So really looking at how much sleep am I currently getting and improve those sleep patterns by a half hour. So you can wake up and feel energized because if you're waking up and you're tired, you're not getting that quality of sleep. So if you're feeling energized in the morning, then your body rhythm is okay at six hours. So we really need to be aware of how much sleep we're getting because the sleep in the circadian rhythm actually helps with the repair, with the rejuvenation, and it's going to help fuel your cells and help prevent disease. Emotions. You know, when we are stressed and we're worried and we're feeling not so good about ourselves, we turn to sugar, fat, salt, and our emotions, because we don't want to express them, we're keeping a lot inside, can cause us to overeat, not sleep, and that could cause a lot of diseases, high blood pressure. And what we really need to do is be a better manager of those emotions by working with a professional to get them out, by talking to a friend, by not turning to, you know, overeating or over exercising and balancing out and maybe writing down, I'm feeling sad. And why am I feeling sad? And asking yourselves questions like, oh, I'm feeling sad because I lost my job, or I'm feeling sad and overwhelmed because a friend said something to me, or someone is sick and I don't know what to do. So really write those words down, get them on paper, and then you're letting that emotion out and you free yourself. So this is what I mean by that formula of freedom. You need to free yourself from things that are causing your body and your mind improper health or healthier habits. So that is definitely key. Anxiety, you know, anxiety is a higher level of emotions where it's wearing on you, where you never let it out, that you're so inundated of that, that mind thought of negative activity and worry, and that is really eating you alive. And you need to find ways to express that anxiety that's healthier. So you need to free yourself from that anxiety and look to meditation, moving more, um, drinking that water and guzzling and saying, you know, I am going to drink this down and free myself from what is causing me the anxiety. And I know that anxiety and worry and fear are very challenging, but we need to channel that energy into a better, healthier habit. And that's where 
you know, you can look to professionals, you could look to friends. There's so many organizations and groups. I have a Formula to Freedom public Facebook group and where I am educating and helping you identify these different parameters that we've already recently talked about and getting the help that you need. The first step is recognizing where you're at as your level of anxiety and figuring out some self-care and some ways to manage that anxiety. I'm here to help and there's a couple of things that I do as a professional and as my company sustain a while. One key way we talked about nutritional guidelines and I found a product called Juice Plus. It's fruits and vegetables in a capsule and what it truly is, it's foundational nutrition. It is apples, it is osceola cherries, it is garlic, it is broccoli, it is kale, it is those fruits and vegetables picked at their peak, so they're getting their high nutrient value, then they're juicing them, but they're taking the sugar and the salt out of it and freeze drying it and becoming powdered produce, and then they're putting it into a capsule. This foundational nutrition with all the phytonutrients kind of bridges the gap between what you're currently eating, all the same fruits and vegetables. I find myself eating broccoli and spinach and kale over and over again and bananas and apples because they're easily readily available. I'm eating blueberries now. I was eating strawberries, but it's not on a continuum. So that is what I call foundational nutrition. And that might be the one key because we find that more colors of the rainbow, more fruits and vegetables helps suppress the immune system and helps us crave less sugar and salt. So that's one area. Also, a lot of us like, you know, wine and other alcoholic beverages. And by no means do I want anybody to give up. And this is not a conversation where I'm proposing anybody to give up anything. We're looking at the behavior and say, how can I change that? You know, we go back to the donut and the cookie and the cupcake example. But we all love our beverages, whether it's Coke or wine. And what I found is I partnered with a company that's found a clean crafted wine. And what I mean by clean crafted, they you take the, the grapes and they pick them at cooler temperatures and then they prepare, prepare the grapes in a way that they're not adding extra sugar or sulfites or filtering it through um, fish guts and things like that, where that is where we're getting the allergies and things like that. And they're fermenting it. And some of these um, farms, let's be honest, the vineyards are putting pesticides and organic thing, unorganic things into their particular beverage. What also I love about the Scout and Cellar brand, as well as the Juice Plus company that I've partnered with to keep that brand of eating and living clean, is that the bottles, there's less glass in the bottles. They're really looking at the packaging, keeping things green and healthier living for you. So I'm here to guide you and to either coach you and to find products that are gonna make sense to help you take those steps for change. So for a minimal cost of getting Orchard and Garden for $51 a month, which also you're gonna get my support of guiding you through as well from a coach perspective, as well as living and eating clean to getting a combo set of a white and a red wine that's cleaner for $49, you're indulging in less sugar and living a healthier life. So if that's something you're interested in, there's a link below. I can, um, you can get in touch with me after. You can go to www.sustainawell.com. There's a link to the clean crafted wine to get you those sets as well as giving you some solutions to nutritional products from the Orchard Garden and Vineyard blend to an Omega blend to our Tower Garden. So I'm here to fit you into breaking free from that formula to freedom. Sustain a Well and my coaching services are a one-to-one -one healthy living session. This is a 60-minute deeper dive into a 10-point self-assessment of where do we need to look at your behaviors? Where do we need to come up with an action plan? We together are going to find that complimentary meal plan that isn't a plan that was just devised by a nutritionist or a dietitian that you really 
have trouble following, but we craft a plan that makes sense based on your lifestyle. Are you a late morning riser? Does your weekend plans change? Are you active? What kind of job do you do? Do you like Brussels sprouts and broccoli? What are the foods that you eat? And for a reasonable fee of $99, we are going to do a 60 minute deeper dive into what's happening and give you a plan for success and coach you through that particular. So there you can also see that link and schedule that appointment with me. So you can go to my website and do that as well. So living free and eating free is what I'm all about. That is what Sustainable proprietizes itself on. You know, as I said in the beginning, I have been helping people over 20 to 25 years. My journey is still evolving and still going on. I still struggle like each and every one of you in the management of those cookies, cakes, and candy. I've just found a formula that makes sense to me and I hope you will too. Please reach out to me to get your formula freedom. And if you're looking for more of a public sector and really want to follow me along, then go to my Facebook public group, Formula to Freedom. Thanks for taking the time and joining me and my class for Formula to Freedom. I hope you join me next month where we'll talk a little bit more about diving into one of the topics of self-esteem and breaking free from those things that hold us back. Bye now. Have a awesome rest of your day and looking forward to chatting with you soon. Bye-bye now.